We've been in a series called Centered, and uh, it's, it's, the, the premise of it is being drawn together, and it's about community, and just us being centered in community. And last week we talked about prayer. This week we're going to talk about uh, encouragement in community, encouragement in community. So we're going to start out in the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verse 23. If you've got a, like a page turn in Bible, you can turn Hebrews 10. Paul's writing this to the, to the Hebrews, and he's encouraging them on how to be perseverant, how to endure, how to, how to stand when things get rough, when things don't go your way, when you're struggling a little bit. And, uh, and, and one thing I know about my life is that I hit struggle every once in a while. Does anyone else ever hit struggle street? Like, I, I think you could mail me things on struggle street sometimes. My house is found on that street. You act right. So the goal in life is to not take up residence on struggle street. All right. We don't want to be on struggle street. Okay. So Paul's writing this because he's wanting to encourage the Hebrews that even though they're going to lose confidence sometimes, they're going to struggle with their faith, he wants them to understand a couple key things. Let's read in verse 23 what he says. He says, Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. Something that I realized in my own life is that I don't wake up every morning with zero adversity in my life where I don't need any encouragement. That I walk through my life, and if you're anything like me and you're humanity, you probably need a couple extra doses of encouragement. I think that every one of us need encouragement, but we need more encouragement. In fact, Purdue did a study in 2008, and this is what they found. It says that according to a relationship researcher, John Gottman, the magic ratio is five to one. This means that for every one negative feeling or interaction that we have, there must be five positive feelings or interactions. Think about this ratio. What that tells me is, is that for every thing that I hold on to, every negative interaction, feeling, thought, every word from when I was five years old, I need at least five things said directly to counter that. I need an interaction that's positive to counter that. If I was in business, what I would tell you is, is that if you have a negative complaint from a customer, you probably need to have five positive interactions on the way to resolving that for that customer. There's something built into us that we hold on to negativity. Like we have this negative like memory machine that it gets, it, get, it gets buried inside of us and we remember these things throughout our lifetime. It, it's very easy for us to recall the negative things. But if I asked you what was the last word of encouragement that you received, you would struggle probably to tell me what that last word is, but you wouldn't struggle to tell me the last negative interaction that you had. So the ratio was five to one. So I, I'm, I'm here to profess to you that we need not only encouragement, but we need more encouragement. Okay? Now this, this is my statement for the day, is that we require a constant drip of encouragement. We require a constant drip of encouragement. And number one, the number one point we're going to talk about is encouragement requires community. Encouragement requires community community. Let's break down what this means. Right in the very beginning of this passage that I was reading, let us consider how we may spur one another. One another, not ourselves on. Let us consider how we may spur one another on toward loving good deeds, not giving up meeting what? Together. Okay? As some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another. So we see one another used twice. We see this idea of meeting together. So there's this togetherness. There's this community feel to what Paul is saying. He's saying, you need to learn. So here's what, here's what one another means. It's reciprocally shared. Reciprocally shared, mutual. So it's the idea that it's having common union. 
It's where we get the word communion. It's where the word community comes from. Common union. Common union means that I'm not merely living side by side with you. That community isn't built on the fact that we can put houses next to each other, master planned, and there's suddenly community. That communion and having common union means that we go from side by side and we move to a place that as, as you have success and as you grieve and you have failure in your life, so do I. As, as, as I experience success and failures and griefs, so do you. That our hearts are woven together. That we're not merely shoulder to shoulder any longer. But we're heart to heart. That what Paul is saying is, is that you need to encourage one another in the context of this heart to heart common union relationship. The word encourage means to comfort, to call to one side, to invite, to come alongside. It's an invitation. It means to comfort, call to one side, to invite, come alongside. This word consider means to perceive, to observe, to understand. So what this is telling us is that I have to have a close enough perspective of you to encourage, to press courage into the hearts of the people around me. But I have to be living life with you heart to heart so that I know the areas of your heart that you need courage pressed into. That I should understand it, I should perceive it, I can observe it, I can, I can see. This is where you need encouraged. This is where you need me to invite you to come alongside of me as I walk in that invitation to come alongside you. It's reciprocal, that it's in each other. So I'm going to restate this. We observe where we may be losing confidence or faith. For the purpose of being able to come alongside each other to press courage into each other's hearts. Because remember, there will be days that you will wake up and go outside and you will be on Struggle Street. That your confidence will, will, will wane. That your faith, you're going to question some things. And I'm here to tell you, there's a, early on in my, in my Christian walk, it, it was, for me it was hard because I thought, if I question anything, then I must not be a Christian. And if I am, I'm a really bad Christian because I'm struggling with wrapping my brain around this. But then I realized, isn't that the definition of faith? It's in the midst of struggle. To still be willing to stand up and press courage and have courage pressed in and continue on the journey down Struggle Street. We need community for encouragement. Number two, encouragement in community strengthens. Encouragement in community strengthens. This, this part of this passage always threw me off because it says, let us consider how we may spur one another on. When I think spur, what do you think? What do you think? A horse? What else do you think? Spur. Ouch. A burr? Ben-Hur. Oh, you're like prodding me. Wow, okay. When I, when I was a kid growing up, especially in Oceanside, like we, we grew up running around in Southern California, so it's never winter. So not wearing shoes a lot, I'd run around outside. Well, during the summer months, the only thing that changed was that the weeds that we call lawns, the weeds that we call lawns, the, the weeds are green, 
and the stickers are soft in the winter. Winter. And during the summertime, what happens to those stickers? Man, so I remember running across our front lawn, brown weeds, these burrs in the bottom of my feet, right? And then you get those ones, what are they called, goats? Goat, what, like a goat head? Man, those things are lethal. You get one of those in your foot, you're like, ah, ah, and then you like, you sit down, and, you're, and then you sit on one, and then you're like, ah, you got one in your foot, you got one in your hind quarters, I'll just be nice and appropriate by saying that. Because everyone knows if you've been here long enough, I can be inappropriate. Okay. The word spur is, is it, it, this, is the, this is the word, irritating. Hold on a second. I, I feel like I have a whole new life as a pastor now. Because I'm going to reread this passage to you. And let us consider how we may, how I may, irritate you. It is a mandate from God and God alone that I would be an irritation. The word spur means to incite, to provoke, to irritate. But biologically speaking, here's what irritation means. It says to stimulate, as in an organism, a cell or an organ, to produce an active response. And remember, why is Paul writing this letter? Because the faith and the confidence of the people he's writing to is laying dormant. They're struggling. Struggling to endure. So what's he saying? I want you all to maintain community, be an irritant to one another, to stimulate an active response, because right now your faith it may be waning and becoming inactive. So this is a positive thing. So the scripture that says, this is the New King James Version, Proverbs 27, 17, as iron sharpens iron. Some of you might have heard this. I love this version. It says, so a man sharpens the countenance of his friend. The word countenance, it means sharpens the face or the edge of his friend. So follow me for a second. The word sharpen means to be fierce, strong, to be alert, to not lose your edge. How many of you ever snowboarded before? How was the first experience? Any of you end up in the hospital after the first experience? Yeah, be honest. Okay, cool. So... Snowboarding is a very interesting sport. Uh, growing up surfing and riding skateboards at a young age, so I started snowboarding, and my friends basically took me up to the mountain, and they said, okay, here's what you do. Um, strap it to your feet and leave the back foot out. Okay. And they go, C follow us. I'd never been snowboarding. And they take me over to this thing, this chair on a cable, and it takes me all the way to the very top of the mountain. And I say, well, what do I do when we get up to the top? I see these people, the chair spins around. And how do you get off? And they said, just put your feet down and stand. And just go straight. Don't try to turn. Okay, I do it. I'm like, I don't die. Okay, we're good. So then they take me over to a bench and they say, put your back foot in. Okay, put my back foot in. Strap the bindings down. Okay. And what do I do? Go down the hill. Right? And these are my friends. And they take off and leave me. And I, I'm trying to, I'm going down the hill and the edges of the snowboard, let me tell you something. You want to be sure that you understand what those edges do. Okay? So it's easy to lean on your heels and kind of do what they call a, a falling leaf where you just kind of go back and forth, and you, you're always facing downhill. You're just, you kind of go back and forth, right? But it's really scary to let your board drop down the hill and lean on your, what they call your toe side edge, because you, you got to keep your edge. Because if you're on your face, here's the mountain, 
and you're leaning and you lose your edge, you're going to end up on your face. We need to encourage one another so we don't lose our edge and end up on our face. Do, are you getting what I'm saying? We need to maintain a vigilance. We need to be alert. I didn't figure this out until someone came alongside and said, Hey! You don't lose your edge. And a stranger stopped and helped me for a brief second. I was so sore by the end of the first day, right? And I felt like I had like a leap years of, of advance because I grew up surfing and skateboarding. What this is saying, what he's saying is we have to be able to incite and provoke and irritate. We have to cause an active response in one another so we don't lose our edge, so that we maintain a fierceness. Are you fierce? Are you, are, are, are you maintaining a fierceness in your life about your faith? Do, do you have a fierce confidence? Are you maintaining the ability to stand when everything around you says you don't have what it takes to make it? You don't have the courage. You don't have the strength. This is where Paul says, we need to come alongside one another and we strengthen one another when we remind each other, keep your edge. Stay fierce. Stay strong. Don't lose your edge. Be alert. Don't lose your edge. We press courage into one another. So, Hebrews 3.12 says, see to it. Now, I, I, I want that word that right there, see to it, tells me you and I have a responsibility to make sure whatever, whatever is about to be said, we have 100% responsibility to make sure it happens. See to it. If someone looked at me and said, see to it, that my wife and children are taken care of if something happens to me. Whose responsibility is it? Mine. So I read this with a sense of whatever's about to be said is my responsibility. It's also your responsibility. See to it, brothers and sisters, that none of you has a sinful, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God. See to it. It's painting the picture, what he's saying you, you, you have a responsibility to come alongside one another and be an encouragement to incite each other, to inspire one another to fierceness, to passionate courage. See to it. But too often what we do is we just go, well, it's not my responsibility. You know, whatever, the, whatever they're doing behind closed doors in their house, has zero effect on me. It may destroy their family, but that's not how my family, you know, and, and I, 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 wanna, I wanna tell you something. Whatever happens to one of us is happening to the rest of us. We, we, have, we have lost this in society. We've lost the reason. We've lost the, the conviction we, we've even maybe lost the understanding that when one of us is grieving, we all grieve. When one of us suffers, we all suffer. When one of us succeeds, we all succeed. We've become so individualistic that you are not my responsibility. I could, I could come alongside you, as encouragement says, to come alongside. I could observe that you are struggling and you're having a hard time. And I could say this. You're not my responsibility. You know, I, I, I have seven kids at home. I have seven responsibilities. You are not one. I got 99 responsibilities. <laughs> but you ain't one. And this scripture tells me that we are responsible for one another. This is reciprocal. That 
and your confidence is waning, it's my responsibility to come alongside you. Paul says, but encourage one another daily as long as it's called today, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. Is today today? Then we have a job to do with each other. As long as we can say, well, today is still today, then we have a responsibility to one another to strengthen one another, to call out that fierceness that we've been given. Number three, encouragement and community builds. Encouragement and community builds. 1 Thessalonians 5.11 Therefore encourage one another. There's those two words again. Encourage one another and build each other up just as in fact you were doing. This idea of building each other up, when you, when you, when you look at the words that are used, it means to build or erect a house on a foundation. It's the idea that you and I come alongside one another, we strengthen each other, but we also participate and we're active in the building of each other as houses. And houses are built for the needs of the environment that they're being built in. So you go out to like, you ever go out to like Palm Springs? We're dropping into Palm Springs and one of my kids goes, why are the houses look like that? They're all built kind of flat. Or we go to the mountains and, and my kids are like, how come all the roofs are like pointy? And you begin explaining to them, well, they're built for the environment they're in. If you had a flat roof and a bunch of snow, what would happen? The building would collapse. Why? Because you were building a house for the needs of a different environment. And too often what happens when we encourage one another, we make the mistake of trying to build other people up for the needs in our own lives. Sometimes the people around you, you're, our friends, will give us great advice. But what they're doing is they're giving us advice to build us into the house that they need to be built into for their current circumstances and situation. Is this clear? Is this making sense? So we have to be very careful because encouragement within community is meant to build, but there is a uniqueness to who you are that as I sit back and I come alongside, you come alongside, and it's mutual, and it's reciprocal, I begin to learn you, you learn me, and I want to call the fierceness out in you, there is a battlefield that your house has been built for there is something that God has created you for, that fierceness. And it looks different maybe than mine. I'm 46 years old, got a big family. So you know what? My application of things might look different if I went to buy a vehicle. I need a school bus. And if you came to me and you were, you're like, hey, uh, you know, I'm a parent and you've got a bunch of kids and so I have one kid and they, they just turned 16, and I'm thinking, like, should we, get, should we get them a school bus? And I can make the mistake of telling you, yep, school buses work perfect. And I encourage you, but based on my needs. And all of a sudden, we all end up in situations where we're, we're not even on the right bus, let alone the right seat. What I'm saying to you is, it's our job to build each other up. We have a responsibility to one another to build each other up to find our fit. Where do you fit? What were you made for? What's that fierceness that God has given to you? What's it for? We know a mother lion. We know, we, like, you know what that fierceness is for on a mama lion. You come, you come against a mama lion's cubs, what happens? Man, so it's like, you come against the mama lion and then you get daddy lion. That's how it goes. And there's a, there's a, there's a fierceness that God's built into you and there's, there's a structure around that that he wants to build you into. 
so that you can withstand the environments that he's called you into. Did you know you've been called into environments that I haven't been called into? And sometimes we have a hard time with that because we're like, you know, I don't think you should be going into, you know, doing X, Y, Z. And it's like, I've been called, this is my, let me say this way. It'd be like me talking to every one of you and telling you that you need to aspire in your life to become a pastor. Wrong. This is the environment God called me into. This is, this is the environment he built me for. This is, this, is, this is why he put a fierceness in me for some reason to be able to do what I do. I am built for this environment. What is the environment you're built for? I long to live in a community where we encourage one another and we build each other up so that we can walk into the spaces and the places that you have been called to, to release that fierce, courageous, passionate, passionate courage. And people go, man, it seems like, how do you do, have you ever looked at somebody and you're like, how do you do that? I don't understand. I try to do, so like, like I'm going to talk about business for a second. I know people, I tried for so long to be in business. God had built me for an environment doing what I'm doing, but I wanted to be in business. And I had people around me telling me, you, you should be in business. That's their house. Are, are you following me? So I tried to be in business. Do you know what happened to me every time I tried to be in business? Fail city. I lean toward ministry. So conversely, I know people that are in business that that is the environment God built them to be fierce in. And that's okay. Have you ever met these type of people? Like they trip and fall and make $10,000. Maybe you have friends like that. Everybody, need, you, you want to have friends like this. Like people that just, they can take anything and suddenly they're like, yeah, I'm making money out of it. I'm going, ah. Why? Because they're battle built. Their house is battle built for that environment. I long to live in a community where we can see this in each other and call it out. Call forth that thing. Press courage into each other's hearts. Ephesians 4.29 Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. Too often, our words are for the benefit of ourselves because we love to hear ourselves talk. Did you hear that great advice I just gave? I'm pretty amazing. And I know this is true because we get expert advice from people on financial stuff that are completely dead broke. They're called friends. They want to tell you the smartest way to handle your money. And I just want to go, show me the fruits of your labor. Start with your bank account. How much peace do you have surrounding your finances? I would never, I, I would never go to my CPA to check me out for a heart problem. Right? So we all have these opinions and we all have advice to give. And oftentimes what happens is, is that we're receiving or giving this advice really to fill our own need. Sometimes the need that we're filling is to feel important. I feel really, imp you know, so many people come to me and ask me for advice. Uh, you feel important, don't you? 
I have no idea what I'm doing about any of these things they're asking me for. But it's just like I'm an oracle. It's like divine. Looking at my life, here's what you should come and ask me about. How to have babies. <laughs> Specifically, females. I'm the man. No, literally, I'm the only man. <laughs> Send help. No, it's kidding. <laughs> I'm not kidding. So our goal here, our aim here as a church, is to live in a community with this mutual heart-to-heart -heart relationships. That alone is hard. 2020 is going to be a year of like, vulnerability and transparency just to do that. Let's take it a step beyond that, but to live in communities where we're willing to take responsibility for each other. And when I look at you and I just go, I could see your confidence waning. Your head seems to be dropping. and it Seems like you're really struggling. we would take care of the orphans. The people that feel that they're left alone and they've been discarded. That we aim, and I, I, I have a dream in my own heart that we would live life in a community that would restore fierceness to each other. To be courageous, passionately courageous. To not lose your edge. Some of us are losing our edge very subtly. We're getting dull. We're allowing decisions that we're making in our lives to dull our confidence and our faith. We're making compromises. We're fighting to hold on. We need each other. More than ever. More than ever, I need you and you need me. More than ever, we need to press courage into the areas of each other's hearts that are dry, that are broken. More than ever, we need to take responsibility for one another. More than ever, we need to overwhelm each other with encouragement an affirmation that you were made to be fierce, passionately courageous, that you can go after the things that God has purposed in your heart. Not because you have the strength, but you have the strength of a community. Not because I can do it on my own, but it says in John 14, Jesus said, I have to leave here, but I'm going to leave one for you. He's even going to be better than me because he's going to permeate every cell of who you are. He's going to live in you. He's the comforter, the advocate, the helper. He's the encourager. Holy, Holy Spirit. Some of you this morning have lost your edge. You 
are struggling. Let's close our eyes. Spirit, we just wait. Encourage us here this morning. Father, we can't be an encouragement without being encouraged. Too many times you've tried to do this on your own. You need courage pressed into your heart this morning. It just seems like you can't you can't get traction. You're just caught in the struggle. You're losing confidence. Struggling. you this morning. That we are fierce as a family. That we're not going to leave anyone behind. We're willing to fight. We're willing to fight for each other's futures. one another and press courage into each other's hearts. So Father, I just I ask right now. God that you would permeate every part the areas that we're struggling in, that we would have a sense of vulnerability to be able to to be transparent and honest. Because here's what I know. If you're struggling with it, there's someone else who is also. But you're not alone. Some of you feel the weight bearing down on you. I just feel like the Lord wants to bring just a peace this morning to release that burden.
for waiting. That's all. For some of you, this is the only break that you're going to get today. This may be the only break that you get all week. Let's pray for rest. Yeah. Yeah. This seems broad, but there's some there's some individuals who are really struggling, who are tired. And you really need rest. And I I feel like it's emotional. That's you. I want to pray for you. Come down here. Come on. This is community, family. This is observing and understanding and perceiving. This is coming. This is coming. This is what it looks like. feel like I feel like what the Lord wants to say is that the cycle of going around and around the same thing over and over um, he wants to break here this morning okay so we get tired because we're trying to chase the merry-go-round we're trying to keep up and you've been trying to keep up for literally some of you for years you've been trying to keep up and you don't hey listen you don't have to keep up you don't have to keep up any longer you don't you don't have to chase after what he has for you. He wants to break everything off today. Right now. Right now. There is freedom for you right now. Right now. The thought patterns that keep us stuck. The negative interaction thought patterns that tell us this is how it's always going to be. I would tell you you're fierce. You're fierce. You're fierce. You're fierce. You're fierce. You're deeply, deeply, passionately courageous. You no longer are victims to the same cycles. For some of you, this has been generational. I want you to hear me. For some of you, these are cycles that you have seen generationally in your life. So as children, you saw the things that you're running in circles doing. You saw these things happening when you were children. You saw this in your grandparents. You saw this in parents. God is giving you a decision today. He's irritating you today, stimulating you today, giving you the ability today to make the choice. If today you say no longer, if today you say, I refuse to let the devil tell me this narrative any longer. And when you don't feel like you have the strength, this is what community is for. That you have a vulnerability and a sensitivity to turn, to be in community with one another and say, I don't think I can lift my head today. I don't think I can take another step today. I don't think I can make it another moment. I think I'm going to reach for that box. I think I'm going to reach for that needle. I think I'm going to reach for that mouse on the computer. I think I'm going to go back to doing these old things. I think I'm going to step back into those harmful relationships. I think I'm going to go back to this old way of life. And you need community.
Lord, thank you for your spirit that lives in us, that encourages and comforts us. I'm just going to have Joby continue to play. For the rest of us, if you need prayer this morning, do not leave this place. January 19th, I want you to remember this day. January 19th is the day that scientifically they've proven that everyone quits on their New Year's resolutions. Okay? So here's the deal. I'm praying as a community that we can press courage into each other's hearts and a fierceness so that we can press past the natural boundaries of failure and we press into what it is that God has for us. We got a handful of days. We can break the barrier. Okay? We can break the barrier. You guys have a great day. In Jesus' name, amen. We're